Chapter 12 Network Design Transmitting data using fiber optics is most popularly accomplished over a local area network by utilizing a 1 gigabit or 10 gigabit Ethernet protocol. Designing a network utilizing SFPs with media converters makes possible newly created networks or expansion that utilizes your existing switches. This video reveals a quick design approach by answering five questions to provide instantly a technical drawing and a quotation. Secure actual design software from our FIS website, fiberinstrumentsales.com. New from FIS, this is a new custom software tool that provides a fiber optic network extension plan that is smart, simple, and hassle-free. Based on information about your existing network, the software provides you with a technical drawing and detailed quotation. Go to fiberinstrumentsales.com and click on Network Expansion Tool. You will be able to explore this new software free from identification and create your results within seconds. Answer five short questions about your existing server connection, fiber type, cable distances, and the final destination. Submit your answers, including contact information, which is optional, and you will get an immediate quote and technical drawing showing a plug-and-play design to expand your network. If you decide to purchase the proposed package, you will receive your custom plug-and-play kit that includes connector cleaning supplies and installation instructions. This software is designed to reduce the amount of time normally that it takes to produce a formal quotation. Your management or customers will be impressed by your promptness. If you have any questions, feel free to call FIS at 1-800-500-0347. John Bruno, in a 4-minute video, talks about how copper networks will actually negotiate speed, where fiber optic networks do not. This important information will impact your network system design considerations. Welcome everybody, John Bruno here back at Fiber Instrument Sales sitting in my office, uh, the rare occasions that I get to get back. I was just reviewing some of my Ask Bruno questions. I get a lot of questions and I, I really implore you to send in any questions that you have, emails or phone, either way, very reachable. But one of the questions I've been getting a lot is, uh, it's reared its ugly head, let's just say. I used to get it a lot in the past, now I'm seeing it more often, so I thought we would address it and that is the... Uh, the difference between fiber and copper over ethernet and to be more exact uh, difference in speeds so as you guys may or may not know ethernet uh, networking tended to, to first start out with your 10 megabit ethernet then we had your 100 meg and gigabit and 10 gig and 40 and 100 you know as we're moving on one of the things you may notice on uh, products especially copper is if we have a copper port it might be a 100 meg port but you'll see it'll actually say 10 100 and if it's a gigabit it'll say 10 100 1000 and that means that the copper depending on what you plug into that that copper can speed up or slow down right it can negotiate the speed so if I have a gigabit copper switch and yet I'm plugging in it let's say a converter or a device that's running 100 meg that port knows well enough to slow down well recently I just had an issue where a customer had an issue where he was he wasn't getting any traffic through uh, he was seeing a link light but he couldn't get the, the data to pass correctly and all had to do with the fact that he was using fiber fiber cannot negotiate the speeds so whatever port that that fiber port is made for 10 meg 100 meg gigabit 10 gig it can't slow up slow down or speed up its speed so the real critical factor when we're linking two ports with fiber over ethernet is that those port speeds on each transmit and receive side have to match the speeds or we won't get any transmission the long and the short of it a real quick explanation especially in your multi-mode side if we look at the history of light sources and what controlled what speeds our, our first 10 megabit devices you know they ran with an 850 LED light emitting dial right 850 wavelength when we bumped up to 100 meg they actually changed that LED to a 1300 LED you, know, you can see the problem 
we have two different light sources. Then when we went to gigabit, because LEDs can't handle uh, gigabit speeds, we had to use VIXELs, what we call vertical cavity surface emitting lasers. So we went back to the 850, but now we have a VIXEL. So between those three network speeds, we have three different light sources. And, you know, practicalities, we're not going to make a device that has all three light sources. We're going to theoretically triple the price of that network, so or that port. So what we do is, whatever speed you have on one side with your fiber, speed and fiber type, we need to match that on the other side. So as an example, an SFP on one side that's gigabit multi-mode has to be an SFP gigabit on the other side multi-mode. So a quick uh, heads up, the customer in question, he had this question, he was hooking up 100 meg to gigabit over fiber, and all we did was he changed out his SFP on the one side, pumped him up to gig. Now both sides are running gigabit ethernet, problem solved. So again, the long and the short of it, copper can negotiate speeds, fiber can't. Thanks again, and I look forward to seeing you out on the road at a class. Thank you. We will close this chapter by returning back to fiber optics by showing our new SFP video. Active equipment such as media converters and switches are now commonly equipped to receive small SFPs or small form factor pluggable transceivers. These transceivers simply plug into the unit. It is now the SFP that contains the detector, light source and programmable chip to interface with your network. The SFP flexibility provides the ability to meet your system's changing requirements. All SFPs generally utilize the small LC, MTP or MPO style fiber optic connectors to serve as the send and receive ports the basic SFP supports Ethernet speeds of 1 gigabit per second data rates. Single mode or multi-mode fiber options are determined by the SFP you select. The SFP Plus is an upgraded SFP, enabling up to 10 gigabits per second data rates. Select either single mode or multi-mode, and like all SFPs, the SFP Plus is hot swappable or can be plugged or unplugged without powering down. The QSFP or QSFP Plus, has the ability to transmit a 10 gigabit signals on a single fiber, but by using four fibers, a total delivery of 40 gigabit transmission rate is achieved. The QSFP uses a MPO or MTP style fiber optic connector mounted on its end, having 12 fiber capability but requiring only eight of these 12 fibers to be utilized. Each send or receive require the four fibers, enabling the 40 gigabits per second data rate. The QSFP28 is designed for 100 gigabit per second data rates. Using the MPO or MTP 12 fiber connector, the four transmit and four receive fibers to the module now have a 26 gigabit per second per fiber, providing four fiber requirement to achieve the 100 gigabit transmission data rate. The AOC cable, or active optical cable that functions as a patch cord contains SFPs that enables 10, 40, and 100 gigabit transmissions. These patch cord style cables are typically short and often used to link switches to a rack or used in high speed network backbones. AOC style cables production numbers continue to grow. All SFPs require programming for successful interfacing to your network. An MSA standard was the objective of Alibaba and Microsoft, plus 22 additional companies, to establish a universal code. The MSA code is the most common programming code presently used, but be aware your network may require one of the following proprietary code of Alcatel, Cisco, Dell, HP, IBM, Intel to name a few. Fiber Instrument Sales is able to program the SFP you require. Also, depend on fiber instrument sales to provide the SFPs or active optical cable you require. Thanks for watching this video. There are more free training videos. Go to the playlist by clicking the top right.